Hi, I'm Charles with Anycap. The story begins as a group of men walk through town and one of them stares intensely at an object. They encounter a man in the shadows and the leader of the group seems to have heard of this shadow person. The group attempts to strike first but the man emerges from the shadows and in a matter of seconds wipes out the entire group. He leaves and the leader of the group uses his last moment of life to bite down on a gold coin. Afterwards, a mysterious person arrives to find the group dead and picks up the red object along with the gold coin. Sometime later, we find that the man from the shadows is a samurai when he is approached by a stranger that calls out to him. The stranger introduces himself as Usui and the samurai reveals his name to be Karima. Usui explains that he runs an odd job service in the area and employs a group of all-purpose laborers. Karima is curious about what this man wants with him so Usui explains that he has heard of rumors of a very stern looking samurai passing his days in the village recently. Locals have grown concerned and hired Usui to look into the matter of the samurai. Usui points out how refined Karima is after introducing himself so properly and is curious as to why he is sleeping under a bridge instead of at an inn. Usui assumes it's because he is trying to avoid being seen and Karima concedes that he has killed a man. Usui can understand his situation now and Kurima is shocked to see that he doesn't seem surprised about the information. Usui explains that he isn't surprised but does have more questions now and points out how this town isn't the best place to hide for someone that committed murder. Kurima explains that he was actually ordered to take the life he took and had no choice but to carry out the order. It is his duty to dispose of traitors who pose a threat to the clan. Usui points out how strange it is for him to be avoiding people under a bridge if what he did was actually a lawful act committed within his duty, and he should be able to return home with pride. However, Karima reveals that the person he killed was someone he knew that was very important to him, and he can't bear to face those who knew him. Usui points out that Karima won't find any answers to his problems hiding under a bridge. Karima thanks him for putting things into perspective, and Usui just calls it one of the many services he offers. Karima heads off and tells Usui that he can report back to the people of the village that he has gotten rid of the lurking samurai. As Karima heads back home, he is stopped by a group and wonders if they are there to escort him back. One of the men mockingly commends him on a job well done after slaying his father-in-law and his men single-handedly, and Karima defends himself by stating that he simply did what needed to be done when his father-in-law sullied his hands by becoming involved with opium trade. The man explains that Karima only needs to carry out one last duty, and pulls a gun on him. They no longer have any use for him and prepare to kill Karima. Just before he can be shot, Karima hears a voice that tells him that if he doesn't want to die, then he needs to stop talking and jump. He does just that as he is shot at and the men wonder if he has gone mad to do something so dangerous. They are confident that he wouldn't survive such a fall and decide to report exactly that to their boss Matsumune. We then see that an extremely long string had been attached to Karima as it pulls him from the water and a girl explains that his death won't be her fault since Karima was the one wasting time talking to the men. Afterwards, Karima wakes to find the girl and Usui in a room with him. He wonders if he was the reason he is still alive and Usui confirms it by reminding him that he handles all manner of tasks. Usui points out that as a day job, he also makes small items. Kurima wonders who exactly they are and Usui states that in a business like his, you learn a lot of things about the Nagasaki underworld. Usui states that someone from Kurima's clan had been making secret deals for opium, but Kurima's father-in-law was investigating the issue and not the one involved. Usui explains that this means whoever told Karima to kill his own father-in-law is the mastermind behind the opium deal. This person is the chief financial officer of Satsuma named Matsumine. It seems as though Karima's father-in-law had just enough information to complete his investigation and that must be why Matsumine wanted him eliminated. Karima condemns himself for being tricked like a fool into killing his fiancé's honorable father. He refuses to live with the shame but Usui points out how that would only mean that Mutsumune would remain in his position completely unharmed. This realization refocuses Kurima on revenge and Usui reveals that Kurima's father-in-law had hired Usui right before passing. He suspected something might happen to him so he wanted to ensure that Usui would fulfill his mission in its place. Usui explains that a mission like this one requires a vast knowledge of the Matsumune estate and the city of Satuma overall. He asks for Karima's help and he agrees. Soon after, the mission begins and Karima has memories of his fiance as he thinks about how he knows revenge won't be enough to make amends for what he has done, but he will still go through with it. 
As they make their way through the village, they overhear women gossip about Karima's fiance, Yuri. She had just lost her father and news had arrived that Karima was killed as well. Usui points out that Karima can't tell Yuri that he is alive just yet, and Karima states that he wouldn't be able to face her anyway. Karima then goes over the map and explains how the main entrance is heavily guarded, but once inside, there are several blind spots that can be used. A small group like theirs can sneak in and take them by surprise without causing too much commotion. Usui assumes that the place must have a secret exit, but Karima explains that it does not. Usui then instructs Karima to stay put since his injuries would only make things more difficult and so he agrees. Elsewhere, Matsumune boasts about how his plan has gone perfectly as everyone believes Karima was a deranged killer and that keeps all suspicion from himself. Matsumine credits his experience in dealing with bullheaded warriors for his success, and states that all he had to do was let Karima cause a bit of a ruckus. They laugh about how Karima and his father-in-law must be stewing in the afterlife as we get a glimpse of an upset Karima. The men soon run out of sake and wonder where the server has gone, as we see Karima once again, but this time he is preparing himself. He leaves the hideout as a man watching states that his departure was definitely not part of the plan. The man searching for the server finds him tied up but can't do anything as the girl from Karima's group uses the kite she has been working on to kill him. The rest of the guards are then alerted but they don't stand a chance as another man from Karima's group quickly eliminates a couple of them. Usui then demonstrates his unique fighting style as he uses an item he was working on earlier to suffocate one of the guards as he says a prayer. The prayer ends as he asks for the guard to repent just before he dies. Afterwards, the group find that there is actually a secret exit, and realize now that Karima must have outfoxed them. We then see that Matsumine is making his way through the secret passage and manages to escape. Unfortunately for him, Karima had been waiting for him and asked for an explanation, but Matsumine refuses to cooperate. An enraged Karima quickly unleashes a swift attack, completing his quest for revenge. The rest of the group realize that this must have been Karima's plan from the beginning, and he was just using them to smoke Matsumine out of his hole for him. A member of the group is upset that Karima stole their target, but the others explain that at least the job was done even if it wasn't their doing. The girl rings a bell to alert to everyone that the job has been completed, and Karima rushes off to find his fiance Yuri. He thinks about apologizing to her for not realizing Matsumine's plan and killing her father. Karima prepares to kill himself in front of her as he thinks that is the only way to make up for this terrible wrong he has done. He finally makes it to her home as he calls out her name, but is horrified to find blood everywhere as she had just taken her own life moments before. Karima can't hold back the pain as he explains that he has so much to atone for and calls out his fiance's name as he holds her in his arms. Thanks for watching part 1, future parts will be in a pinned comment below.